I loved off the day, the fashion shop. Um, if you wanted a special dress or an outfit for a special occasion, you could guarantee you could go into the shop and you would find it. Well, that was a ladies' dress shop. That was another dreaded shop. Oh, dear. Once, once you went open the door, they sort of pounced on you and almost pulled you into the shop and wouldn't let you out unless you bought something. The lady assistants were really friendly and helpful. Yeah, they made you feel good. What my last one that I bought was for a wedding. Um, being very short, it had, the dress had to be shortened. But um, I bought a hat to go with the outfit and also a jacket. And they edged the um, jacket and round the brim of the hat. It was a, I felt really grand in that dress. <laughs> Goldings that sold everything. You know, you could get nuts and bolts and tins and all sorts of things at Goldings. Then what good things you can get from the shop, you know what I mean? Um, like, I usually go in there and buy the hard stuff, like, you know, where you can get nowhere else. Yeah. I went into Goldington's out of desperation. <laughs> And asked if they'd got any of this windoline. And I, I've I've had this a while now and I use it very sparingly because I can't get it anymore. Well, perhaps online, I don't know, but I'm not good online. Both of those items do are an email today, who go links and just today. May the other technical children or electrical or uh, I remember Mr. Golden giving me a wedding present, food whisker. Very nice one though, you know, nice one. Somebody said, oh, he's getting, ma getting married next weekend. And, yeah, so, uh, well, they were rather, rather stately gentlemen, really. Not, uh, not at all. Not very, not very approachable, and they had a very wide knowledge which they used to expound on you whenever you went in there. <laughs> I used to like to go and have a look at all the different models they had uh, and model kits and so forth. Because so I was quite used to build some of them, you know. The first model I made was HMS Victory, the Titanic, uh, a big, uh, very modern destroyer, and I made a Lancaster. Boeing Flying Fortress. Yes, I bought one of their cabinets when they closed down, yes. And it's for now for the models. Yeah. <laughs> it was lovely. It was lovely. You couldn't you ha some people stood there for hours to get a stall it used to be packed both sides the whole of round by st paul's church on the bottom of where the bridge is now where they've shut it off for bikes only it used to be packed it was lovely the stall holders were friendly you knew everyone and everyone knew you and it was brilliant my hubby and I used to go down every, more or less, every Saturday. 
to the market to get all our vegetables, you know. Those were the days. Yes, I didn't know what to do. I was going to take a dog and take a dog. Then I was going to take a dog and take a dog. Then I was going to take a dog and take a dog. Then I was going to take a dog and take a dog and take a dog. I can remember there used to be uh, sort of like a meat. Man, uh, you sell meat. <clears throat> the fruit used to come in in wooden boxes, not in cardboard things like they do now. And I used to go down there with my younger brother, and we'd uh, collect these boxes on a hand cart that we'd made, take them home, break up the wood, and make it into kindling. The bundles about so big, about eight or nine inches long and a few inches thick and we'd tie it up with string, and we'd go around the houses uh, selling it as kindling for pocket money. I was, I was about seven, eight years old, perhaps nine. It's around that time. And we used, we used to get a, a little bit of pocket money for doing that, and people used to buy it. You know, they'd buy two or three bundles, because in those days, everyone was using coal fires. Because my trade was a carpenter in joinery, I was asked to make a stall before the next Saturday for somebody to be ready on the mark for the market the following Saturday. So I got on me, I could put my, my little van on the market square, nobody about, and I made a stall. He used to sell pies, cakes, bread, anything, you name it, he sold it. And I loved it, and I worked there for years. Too much to turn it out of beautiful Ireland. Perhaps once a year, every year or so, when the circus came to town, the animals used to arrive at Bedford Station at Midland Road, and the animals would come, be unloaded there, and they'd walk from there straight down Midland Road until they reached the high street. It was quite nice because you could be in, in the middle of the road and you'd hear the elephants screaming and making their roaring noises in the distance. And then you'd see them sort of coming along, slowly walking along with the keeper at the front, sort of leading the first one. And all the others would be following and their trunks would be curled around the other one's tail. It was like a little trail. But I've got a distinct memory. I could only have been two or three. Um, and I remember being my dad picking me up. He, he passed away in 65, so um, yeah, okay, this must be early 50s. I was born in 51, so we're probably about 53, 54, 55, something like that. Picked me up, put me on the shoulders. We were opposite the corn exchange, um, and when the, when the circus came to town, literally there'd be a procession through the town, and they'd bring all the animals in. Yeah, I think, I right. think the elephants, they actually paraded down, you know, walk them through the town. Um, but all the other animals, tigers and lions or whatever you had, were all in cages or it was just a parade. Oh, you know, everybody would come out. Yeah, it was, it was what, just what you did. It was a big event. The circus was coming to town, you know. And it was just amazing. It was called Do John, Doody and Johnson's. It was a, I think there was a shop underneath, and then there was a ballroom and a thing up the top. So we had our reception there in the high street. Well, it, in those days, it was a, a ham salad, and, you know, the ham salad and uh, uh, a little dessert and well. That was water. Was it water? It was nice resorts over 1948 and, uh, you know, yeah, there was recovered a lot. from the war, so I think things were a little bit um, yeah. more frugal than they might be these days. There was. It was, it was just like the, the very earliest supermarket ever. Yeah. Because I remember there was one in Putnam as well. It was a rough branch in Putnam. And we used to go and buy tinned food, which you, you didn't really get like that before. You could just go and select it off, you know, very early supermarket, selecting it off the shelf. And yeah. A big shop with the food shop, and then on the upper floor was the ballroom where people we used to go dancing. My aunt got married there in 1950. Yeah. 
But and then up above was the dance hall and, yeah. and the cafeteria. Yeah. yeah. The dance halls were a bit peculiar because it had columns in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> so you had to dance around the columns. <laughs> Do you remember that? There was yeah, a big dance floor, very popular every weekend. And when it operated, obviously, in the week. Yeah, very popular. Well, there used to be regular dances held up there. And yes, we used to go to the dance there. I was never very good dancers. I went to the lion. The lion's corner has quite a bit because you've got the cakes there, the stairs, and you've got the self service bit upstairs. Oh, it was it was drinks and meals and snacks and sandwiches. Very very big place because it turned into a snooker hall. I think after that. Yes, I do remember. I used to go up there quite regularly. Yes, yes, and together with all the Americans that used to go up there as well. <laughs> Everything was white. Purely white, and the lay they had waitresses in black dresses with white pinafores, and they always used to serve you very nicely. The only cafe that I ever went into was on a Saturday morning with people I worked with, and I took my young son to Kadena. Oh, the Kadena! Yeah, I remember the Kadena. We used to love going to the Kadena for a coffee, or you know when I was um, old enough to go into town on my own with my friend. There was like a, uh, it was like an L-shaped room, um, tables of no bigger than four. Um, and when we went, we used, it used to be lunchtime. And um, I remember, of course, I'm going back to when my children were small, and pizzas were the in thing at the time. They weren't so readily available as they are now. And of course, that was a big treat. Um, it, it, was, it was joyful. It was nice. Yes, that's right. That was where, where Debenhams became. My mum used to work there in E.P. Rose in a big department store, which eventually became Debenhams in Bedford. She was a sales assistant upstairs, selling sheets and, you know, homeware, that kind of thing. E.P. Rose was just a department store. I mean, it sold sort of like furniture and it sold them um, and it sold lots of, lots of clothing and Toys, the, the toy department, and there was um, quite a quite a quite a lot there. You know, the, the DIY stuff as well. Yeah, it was quite expensive. Not as expensive as margins. Margins was a very high class shop, but EP Rose was a little below that level. Yeah, it was on about three floors. Clothes floor, men's, ladies, electrical, in the basement, toys. Because I worked, I worked in the shoe department. I think I started there when I was 16. So it would have been 1973. So I went and worked there as I worked in the, in the shoes and sold the shoes, um, which was on the first floor, I think, mm. sort of a bit tucked away. Um, and then, um, but then we lost all our trade because nothing things opened. Lifts, I had got lifts, and obviously the stairs. So when you went in, you didn't push your buttons yourself. There was a gentleman in there who always operated the lift, and he was very nice. Debenhams are still still called E.P. Roses, and that's when I first of all worked there. I, I, when the first thing they did was a lift attendant. Well, they were mostly. Um, uh, uh, ladies with, with with their shopping bags, or or they were sort of like the 
the ladies were like going up to the restaurant for their morning, for their morning coffee. And those were the days when ladies had sort of like wore hats. Devnum and the both are the Abibi Melba court behind the Sreto Vagara hair or Pantem Bibi Abibi hair. Yeah, I um, I worked at WH Allen and um, there were they asked most of us younger people if we wanted to go in for this swimming competition and it was to win the EP Rose Cup. I think there were three or four of us from EP Rose that went for this swimming at the old um, swimming baths which is Newnham, Newnham Baths and um, we won the EP Rose Cup so I've got a photo of somewhere at home with holding the EP Rose Cup. <laughs> ਇਹੀ ਸ਼ੌਪ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਆ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਇਦਾਂ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਸ਼ੌਪ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਅੱਛਾ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਗੁੱਡ ਸੀਗੀ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਲਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਅੱਛਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਇੰਨੀ ਚੰਗੀ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਲੱਗੀ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਤਿੰਨ ਦਿਨ ਦੀ ਟ੍ਰੇਨਿੰਗ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਉਦੋਂ ਇਦਾਂ ਸਗਾ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਲੈ ਜਾਓ ਚੱਕ ਲਾ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਸੰਦ ਹੈ ਇਦਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਗਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੈਸ ਲਾਉਣੀ ਸਿਖਾ ਲਈ ਜਿਪ ਲਾਉਣੀ ਸਿਖਾ ਲਈ ਸਿੱਧੀ ਸੀਨ ਲਾਉਣੀ ਸਿਖਾ ਲਈ ਮੋਰੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਡਿਜ਼ਾਈਨ ਬਣਾਉਣੇ ਸਿਖਾ ਲਏ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਅੱਛੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੋਲ ਬਾਣੀ ਇੰਦੀ ਅੱਛੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੀਗੀ ਸੋਹਣੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਵਾਂਗ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ਾਪ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਮਸ਼ੀਨਾਂ ਉਥੋਂ ਵਾਈ ਵੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਲੋਕੀ ਹਨਾ ਫਿਰ ਇੱਕ ਮਸ਼ੀਨ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ਾਪ ਇੱਥੇ ਸੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਲੀਡਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਸ਼ਾਪ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਇੱਕ ਦੰਦਾ ਵਾਲੀ ਸ਼ਾਪ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਉੱਥੇ ਕਿ ਲੱਗੇ ਸ਼ਾਪੀ ਆ ਦੇ ਵਾਸ ਸਿੰਗਰਸ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਹਾਈ ਸਟ੍ਰੀਟ cuz they moved into Lark Street didn't they and then someone else took them over and they closed why they closed I'll never know cuz they were always busy sewing machines that's where I brought my first sewing machine i must have been about 20 i think when i first brought my sewing machine there it was a shop a singer sewing machine shop i had um a lesson on a new sewing machine um that my husband uh treated me to you could buy reconditioned sewing machines they were really very very good mm. so a machine as do do machine na laiya dono kudiyan de vyavan te vaddi vedi jehdi onu vi ohna ne training ditti matlab demo kiti ohni machine di ਸਬਜੀ ਭਾਜੀ ਕੋਈ ਇਹੋ ਜੀ ਸ਼ਾ ਲਿਆਉਣੀ ਚਾਹੀ ਟਿੱਡੇ ਹੋਰ ਜੇਠ ਸੌਰਾ ਸਾਸ ਲੈ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਵਿਆਹ ਸ਼ਾਦੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਫੇਰ ਖੜਨਾ ਨੋਆ ਧੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਚਲੋ ਕਪੜਾ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਹੈ ਕੁੜੀ ਦੇ ਲੀੜੇ ਬਣਾਉਣੇ ਕੁੜੀ ਤੋਰਨੀ ਆ ਘਰੋਂ ਜੇ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਦੀ ਵਰੀ ਬਣਾਉਣੀ ਆ ਫੇਰ ਨਾਲ ਖੜਦੀ ਸੀ ਫੇਰ ਦੁਕਾਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਜਾਈਦਾ ਸੀ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਇੱਥੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜੋ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਸ ਲੱਗੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਆਪਾਂ ਚੁੱਪ ਕਰਕੇ ਬਾਏ ਕਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਆ ਹਨਾ ਪਤਾ ਵੀ ਆ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਸਤੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਮਹਿੰਗੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਆ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਲੈ ਲਈਦੀ ਆ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਹਾਈ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਸ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਹਨਾ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਆਇਓ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਭਮਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਹੋਣ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਆਇਓ ਲੱਗਦੇ ਆ ਚਾਹੇ ਤਾਂ ਬੋਲੀ ਤੋਂ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੱਬ ਜਾਣੇ ਉਹੀ ਜਾਣਨ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਤੋਂ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗ ਗਈ ਆ ਵੀ ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਆਇਓ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਸ ਆ 1000 ਰੁਪਏ ਸੂਟ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ 2000 ਦੱਸਣਾ ਹੈ ਹਨਾ 
ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਭੇਦਿਆ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਇੰਨਾ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਹਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਹਾਂਗੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੈਣਾ ਫੇਰ ਉਹਨੇ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਚਲ ਇੰਨੇ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਇੰਨੇ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਇੰਨੇ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਇਦਾਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਵੀ ਉਸ ਜਾਨੀ ਹੈਡ ਹੀ ਕਿਆ ਹੋ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਦਾਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾਤਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਏਰੀਆ ਚ ਜਾਏ ਆ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੰਗਲੌਰ ਰਹੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਕੋਚੀਨ ਗਏ ਕੋਚੀਨ ਕੁਛ ਟਾਈਮ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਫਾਦਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਮੈਂ ਸੀਗੀ ਕੋਈ 13 14 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਥੋੜਾ ਥੋੜਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਸ਼ਾਪਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਫਿਰ ਸਨ 66 ਚ ਮੇਰੀ ਸ਼ਾਦੀ ਹੋਈ ਤੇ 67 8 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਿਰ ਮਤਲਬ ਉਹ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੀ ਸਾਹਬ ਫਿਰ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੰਟੀਨ ਚੋਂ ਸਮਾਨ ਲੈਣਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਜਾਣਾ ਕੁਆਟਰ ਹੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਹੀ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਸੇਮ ਤੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਆ ਕੇ ਕੁਝ ਇੱਥੇ ਫਰਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਮਿਲ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਹੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਰਾਮਤ ਸੀ ਨਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਤੇ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਮੀਟ ਵੀ ਸਬਜ਼ੀਆਂ ਭਾਜੀਆਂ ਦਾਲਾਂ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਮਸਾਲਾ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਸੀ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਆਣ ਕੇ ਖੜੀ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਹੁਣ ਪਾਰ ਕੋ we used to go to the saturday morning you know and we'd sing the we one for all and all for one bedford granted <laughs> it used to cost us 3p at the granada cinema in bedford for a saturday morning matinee in all the kids up to about the age of 11 i suppose used to go there perhaps a little bit older but 9 till about 12 they had their saturday matinee and you pay us for and sin your parents can get rid of you for three hours or so. What I remember was walking up this large um, staircase and there was, um, I think there were three cinemas. I remember, that, I think I remember correctly, there's one downstairs and one to the right and left of these lovely stairs that, you know, they weren't a huge flight. Oh, it was luxury because you'd got red velvet seats and upstairs there was a bal- balcony. I liked it so much up there and I asked the manager if there was a job part time because I could do my job and normal. So I did that. I worked part time for about seven years at the Granada Cinema. I met many, well, Tommy Steele, Russ Conway, uh, Cliff Richards, I met a lot. They used to have um, live shows there, sort of in later years there. I remember seeing the, Be- the Beatles there, um, John Pertwee was there, uh, Helen Shapiro, all, all the old ones, and they used to do it sort of every few months, they'd have a show there, and it, it was really good. But the organ, of course, and I was given permission to use the the Granada organ to play on, and it was fascinating because it's exactly the same one that was at Granada, but at um, Blackpool Tower. It's exactly the same, well, it's an organ. Well, my husband, Malcolm, um, was a senior projectionist he went along to the cinema and there happened to be a vacancy so he learned the job and that was it because he just loved it he had a fantastic ability to remember um all about the different films especially the old ones it was a grand cinema it was lovely and i thought malcolm was going to cry when it was little Yeah, there's a lot of things that 
so sadly we have to move on with but it's the personal touch it's the it's the little things that you miss